playing with the idea of sanding it all down and starting all over. And that's gonna take about five hours. I'd rather sleep in blue jeans the rest of my life. We broke the sander. <laughs> I broke the sander. I was being nice. <laughs> Shane broke the sander. So we're just changing up this whole project right now. <laughs> we're just changing up the whole thing. Okay. Let me show you what we're about to do. TikToker, I'm gonna have her wave. Hold on. Wave. <laughs> I got my painting pajamas on. I go from having my regular pajamas to my painting pajamas, but I have my painting pajamas on. Banks is freaking out over a neighbor that's lived there for 10 daggone years. Banks! Banksy! It ain't like they've lived there for a decade or nothing. I wanna get started on this project. What is it? You just trying to protect the house, ain't you? I'm gonna try to get started on this table while watching her live. She is the cutest TikToker ever. I'm gonna do a total table transformation in this dining room refresh. It's gonna be the biggest part of the refresh. I'm using something I already have because have y'all seen the prices of tables? Ashley Furniture, these local furniture stores, the tables are outrageous. I already had a good working table. It was just a little ugly. <laughs> so I figured why not just work off of what I already have, use this as a base and build on it. So I started off by giving it a good wipe down and then finding the center of the table because I really really wanted a herringbone look. I don't like the staggered look of the traditional herringbone. I like more of the chevron look, like the arrows. So that's the look I'm going for. I'm gonna call it herringbone throughout this video because I don't know what other word to use, but it's not the staggered herringbone that herringbone usually is. I'm just going for a chevron look. Once I get all of this Lord only knows what stuff off the table, we look for the center of the table and we have to make sure we have the exact center of the table because every single piece we apply to this table is it's gonna be angled. It's a butt. <laughs> it's a butt to do, but it is so worth it. It's such a pretty design. So we had to make sure everything, all the measurements were correct in order to get this to look good. After that, in order to make this process a lot more easier than it would have been without doing this, we stenciled it onto the table. We took a pen and we drew out our pattern by using one plank to make sure we knew exactly how many planks we would need cut and exactly where those planks would go. Let's be honest, there was no we, it's Shane. Shane did this. <laughs> we as in Shane. <laughs> Our chevron pattern is gonna be split down the middle. So he's just going here and he's looking to where each point is and he's matching that point of the plank to the other side of the plank because it's gonna be one side going down to the right, the other side going down to the left. So he put points on each side to make sure that it's level so that one plank isn't longer on one side than on the other side and it messed up the whole entire pattern. So here's the thing. See this arrow shape? Show them the arrow shape. That's called herringbone. I got a herringbone in these woods. What is herringbone? I'm thinking it's when you have an ingrown hair okay. grow on your bone. Anyway, we've got I mean, to... that's logic. <laughs> Welcome to Shane's logic. <laughs> Won't always make sense, but... If you know, you know. So we've got to herringbone the wood. Mm-hmm. And we got our print yeah, here. Yeah, we've got our print here. This is good. This is a good area. I think we're gonna stop here for tonight. No, we we're are not. We're gonna pick not. it back up next week. Shane, we're not stopping here. Can we next week? Shane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we only have 20 pieces we have to cut. Only. Sounds bad, but it really isn't. Uh, technically, we've got 24 pieces to cut because we also have to the perimeter. cut our perimeter here. I can't get my perimeters uh, measurements until we have everything laying flat and all that stuff. How are we gonna do, trying to make them tight to each other? 
just put it down, you go nail it, and then try to pull it in t as tight as you can. Yeah, and then I'm gonna fill in the gaps with wood filler. I'm playing with wood filler, and I hate wood filler. You gonna fill in gaps? Yeah. And so we'll just get there when we get there, but I really dread we'll get playing there when with we get wood there. filler. Next week, next week, Shane. next week. The only thing I am worse at than time management. Okay, we're just out and on my flaws. Come on, that, that, what, what, what was that? What was that? Actually, actually thing... your time management is pretty on par. Uh, I was going to say, the like only part of me that's early. bad at time management is yeah, you're you. An, you're an hour early to everything. I am, because I like being considerate. You will roll up at five seconds till, five seconds till the 15-minute grace period. He rolls up at five seconds to the 15-minute grace period. There ain't no reason to be there an hour early. Anyways, the only thing I'm worse at than caulking, which is why this one, no. the caulking, is playing with wood filler. I hate playing with wood filler. Shane's not good at it either, so. Yeah, I really am so, not. I don't like We have to it. really, but you know what? You don't, I've learned over the past two years, you don't gain a skill unless you work at it. So if you're bad at wood filling, then play with wood filler. That's the best way to get good at it. That's what I've learned doing all these projects. You know, the wood should really have consideration for my feelings. They should. Wood filling. Our cuts. Are right, we done? I'm stenciling the cuts. You're stenciling the cut. It's very yeah. professional. Thank you. Can we, a question. Can we nail this from the bottom so I don't have to wood fill nail holes on the top? No. Shane, we have to. I've already the, had my heart set on that. The last thing no. you want is nails to be popping up and then you still got holes it to fill. Be. And also little metal nails to get out of But it won't be it. popping up. Well, they can't be popping up from the bottom either, so. So what's the difference? It's going in from the top. Why? It's from the windows to the walls. <laughs> For real, can we do it from the bottom? No. Shane, there's literally it's the same thing. Listen, I need you to just get on board. <laughs> We're doing it from the bottom. No, we're not. Yes, we are. Ride the train. We're right. doing it from the bottom. Ride the train. Shane, I'm the boss. No, baby. We're not. It's no, we're not. And just like that, we're done. <laughs> there it is. Well, have a blessed evening, morning, night, whatever it is, wherever you're at. <laughs> Know that we love you, but but Jesus loves you more. <laughs> we'll see y'all later. Can we nail this from the bottom so I don't have to wood fill nail holes on top? No. And we're doing it from the bottom. No, we're not. If we only could talk just a little Find a place where the past is forgiven You moved on, I am stuck in the middle Tried to run, but there's nowhere to go Even in my sleep I'm calling out your name But I never wanted things to be Just like I used to do, girl, it happened In my dreams, all I see is the caption Tried to run, but there's nowhere to go Even in my sleep I'm calling out your name
He is going from the bottom so that I have less stuff to fill with wood filler because <laughs> I'm still dreading the wood filler. I just, I watch tutorials on it and I read all sorts of stuff about it and I try do exactly what th those people do but it just does not work i don't know it's something i hate i think i whenever we built this island this island uh could have looked a lot better if i had known what i was doing with well the island looks good the countertop i was in charge of the countertop and i i didn't know what i was doing when it comes to wood filler so like it's very sloppily done which is most of our makeovers from the beginning that's why a lot of times we go in and we change stuff because we started out i told you guys this about a year ago but we have to go in and fix things that we didn't know how to do but we know how to do now because we have experience in it so we have to constantly go back and fix earlier makeovers and change up earlier makeovers because they're not up to the level we're up to now, which is not, you know, a high level. We're not like amazing at home DIYs or anything like that, but we're definitely better than we were back then. <laughs> so shades over there like. <laughs> so we a lot of times we have to go in and fix our own mistakes, but that's good because that means that we're learning. And that means that there's progress. And that means that Shane's kicking tail when it comes to carpentry. I want him to get into carpentry so bad i have begged him to get into carpentry carpentry because like he's he's that good at it but thankfully shane's going from the bottom up so that i have less nail holes and screw holes to fill in with wood filler still gotta fill in the seams i don't know why but i still gotta fill in the seams i don't know why we're filling in the seams if we want the the look I don't know. We quickly found out that the fastest and easiest way to make sure that your pieces are even and flush together is to nail with brad nails our <laughs> Shane's head. <laughs> nail our with brad nails the plank to the table and then saw against the border of the table and that's how we got such a nice even edge of course we're going to put a border around it just to clean it up a little bit but our edge was so even because we did nail it to the table and then cut against the edge of the table to get it really nice and smooth i had shane do our border but with a one by three there are several different ways that we could have done this. It could have been a one by two. It could have been bigger. But I wanted the bottom of the table there to show a little bit. So I went with a one by three. I've been on my spaceship counting stars since 94. Waiting for someone to come and knock on my door. Looking for someone who'd be the Venus to my Mars. Why does love always have to be this hard? Got me feeling like...
This is so tedious. I would rather braid my eyelashes. I just can't. But I'm going to anyway because I have to. I'm using my finger just because I feel like I have more control over the wood filler versus using like one of the putty knives. Whenever I first went into this project, I really was not confident at all with wood filler. By the end of the project, I actually became quite acquainted with it. I was using a little bit too much here, but there was some several areas where there were bigger gaps, so I had to use quite a bit. I would rather floss with sandpaper. Thread every strand of my hair into a needle. Lick bar wire, then do this jump. I'd rather sleep in blue jeans the rest of my life. I'd rather tightrope on a shoestring. 45 minutes down and I've got the butt crack of it and this line done. It's gonna be a long night. It's gonna be a long night. I'm a no pro when it comes to wood filler at all, by no means. I'm still an amateur, but what I did learn throughout this project, like I said, I did become acquainted with it by the end of the project. During this era that you see me right now, I was very insecure with it because I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to use it. I had never done a good job using it. Some things that I learned you don't want to use a whole lot, but you do want to pack it. Don't just rub it, but pack it with your finger. Let it dry completely. Do not try to sand wet wood filler. It does not ever work out in your favor. Ask me how I know. Do not expect the wood filler to stain the same as the wood. It is not going to turn out the same color as the wood, no matter what you do. The best way to avoid the stain mistakes is to sand the wood filler completely down to where the only bit that is on the table or whatever surface you're using, it is in the crevices and that is it. Halfway done, I'm over the complaining and I'm to the thanking part right now. <laughs> thanking God part right now, I just had to get it out of my system. I just had to get, chewing on bar bar, I just had to get it out of my system. <laughs> Braiding my eyelashes. <laughs> it's actually quite therapeutic right now. Kids are in there watching some cartoons with Shane, and I'm in here just chilling and filling in gaps in the wood. Oh, this is my project, baby. I was just telling Shane I ain't never put so much effort and hard work into a project in my existence. This is going to be the project that, like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm connected to. Like, I'm like, I never want to get rid of this project right here i have put so much tedious effort shane has put so much effort into this thing you would think it would have been easy i thought it was going to be easy which we always think it's going to be easier than it is but uh this thing this is my great white buffalo <laughs> we're only halfway there though we're halfway there Looking real fine, nothing's gonna get in the way. I'm going to wipe this off, get all the loose, it's about dried actually, but get all the loose pieces of it off there. And then here in a minute, once the other half over here dries, we're gonna start painting it down. <sighs> It goes up good up until here, usually. And then the sanding is usually what messes me up with this wood filler. So we'll see how it goes. Here's hoping. The type of sander you use really matters. And if I could give anybody any advice for whatever my advice is worth, it is get a random orbital, orbital, orbiting, orbiting, orbital. I don't even know what it's called. A random orbiting I think that's what it's called. A random orbiting sander and a corded one at that. This Craftsman one was good while it lasted, but it didn't last very long. The battery always went dead on it because it took batteries. Get a corded sander. It'll definitely come in handy, but you want a high powered one too. You want one that can go low power or high power. This one did good for as much as we used it, which wasn't a whole lot. 
it broke <laughs> relatively easy. So I would bypass a small sander like this and invest in one that has multiple speeds to it and is definitely an orbiting one, a random orbiting one at that. It's forgiving when it comes to grain and going in the grain direction. There's a lot I learned when looking for sanders this go around and I have found the random orbiting sander is about the best option you can find. Hindsight is 2020, and I can tell you right now, I did not do this properly at all. I should have never left any bit of that wood filler visible on the top of the surface, and that is where I messed up. You definitely want to sand all the way, talking to you future Marina, you want to sand all the way down to where the wood filler is just on the inside of the creases, not on the creases. I'm making sure that I sand the top of it down, not only the crevices, but the top too to get it nice and smooth. And then making sure that I go around the edges too and in the corners. I always want to soften up those corners because I am clumsy and I have birthed clumsy children. And the last thing I need is one of them running into a sharp corner. So I always go around the edges and I just smooth it out really good. And then I round off those corners just to give it a more rounded look and to make it safer. This part took forever, not even just for obvious reasons because there was a lot to sand and it took a long time to sand down that wood filler. I, even, I didn't even sand it all away, but what I did sand away, it took a long time. But the battery kept dying and that's the bad part about having a battery powered sander. It always dies. You cannot keep it charged. 30 minutes of sanding and boom, it's dead. And sanding projects usually take quite a long time. So you're constantly having to rotate batteries it's just, it's an inconvenience. So that's why I say go with the corded because I have sanded so fast it's having that corded sander. And if you're wondering what corded sander I'm talking about, you'll see here in a minute when a series of unfortunate events happens and I have to go get a new sander. All right, all done sanding, smooth as a baby's bottom. I'm nervous. <laughs> While it was sanded and smoother than a baby's bottom, there should never been that much visible wood filler left on the surface of the table. What? This leftover wood filler? <coughs> wood filler but it's not like grainy or anything so i don't know we'll see how that stains but everything else is so smooth it's not even funny i've never had something a project that feels as smooth as this all right a bunch of firsts going down in this video i'm using this stain mitt it was a couple of dollars at lowe's and I'm always using my cleaning rags to stain with. And I was like, well, this is a good idea. It's literally a giant glove. Sasquatch glove. <laughs> so I'm going to use this and see if it works. 
Uh, staining, I can't. I used to stain with a paintbrush and then wipe off the excess. Now I usually just you just dip my washcloth or washcloth as we say here in Tennessee and just stain that way and then wipe off the excess. Don't know quite how I'll do with this, but we're just gonna wing it. I'm so nervous as to how this wood filler right here is going to stain. So nervous. Mm -hmm. I love you. Love you. Good to see you in the morning. I'm also using my normal stain, which is the Jacobian. That is my stain that's throughout my house. I don't go cheating on Jacobian. <laughs> I'm so nervous. Okay, just, uh, just dip and swap. Just dip and swap. <sighs> Alright, I got the dip part down. Swap. Oh, okay, let's start at a corner down here and see. Let's go with the grain. Okay. Huh. I don't know if I like this or not. I mean... I did not like this method of staining at all. Actually, later on I get out the paintbrush and I do the paint on method and then wipe off method and I forget how much I really like that method. Usually I stain with a washcloth, but I'm gonna go back to the paint in and wiping away because that way is way easier and I feel like it gets the best results. Keep thinking that I done something but now i'm left with an empty heart no making amends no waking up beside you and holding you till we forget it all how could i know there was no second chances like dominoes my life got really scattered you couldn't keep the door shut and now the frostbite's creeping You left me here, so come home. Why won't you reappear? Things that I said came out totally wrong. Can speak of the truth when it's tainted. I fell into a big black hole. It got me stone cold. always chaotic for me because I, I put a time limit on it and I'm like oh snap oh snap and I feel like I gotta hurry and get everything right really quickly 
But this <laughs> stain and method, I had to turn it into a washcloth because it was so chaotic. I couldn't even do it. And I'm the most chaotic person I know. It's hard enough when you have a large area to stain, but whenever that area has different patterns, it's even harder. That is looking bomb. The grooves where the um, wood filler was, it did not stain like the rest of the table, but it gives it some dimension. When I paint it, the bottom, I'm not, I'm not leaving the bottom white. Surprise, surprise. I know everybody in the farmhouse community is like, what? No! <laughs> I'm actually going to paint it this color, and it's a sort of grayish color, and that's because I wanted to incorporate some of my living room colors in here in my kitchen to kind of bring it both together. So this is like a little Easter egg of my kitchen, or of my living room, I guess you could say. This paint that I'm painting at the bottom with is by Valspar, and it is Honey Locust interior, and I've got it in the satin. So Honey Locust by Valspar is the color that I'm painting the bottom. That you call up when you're down. Wanna be the first who knows all of your deepest secrets? Can I be the one who wakes you up before you miss your ride? Cause I wanna be close to you, and I wanna show you something new. You gotta know every day I got your back, yeah, you can count on me for that. So put your hand in mine, I will be there every day When you're sick of the climb, I will make sure it's okay I you didn't ask for any of this But we read for the sky That's what flying colors I'm going big on this and putting about six coats of the semi gloss polycrylic. First coat on the dry. Look how nice. I'm gonna show you something new. You gotta know every day I got your back. Yeah, you can count. Because there's some areas where it's raised a little bit. 
um, like some bubbles in the poly. Go in, sand it, and then put one more last coat on it, and we'll be done with the finishing. This rug is actually an indoor outdoor rug that I found at Ross. I go through rugs like I go through underwear. I probably go through rugs more frequently than I go through underwear. So I felt this for a really good price and I snagged it for the dining room. So Shane went on and made one bench. We kind of played, it was like kind of figuring out what exactly we wanted to do. We're not going to do the herringbone. It's not even herringbone because it's not staggered. I don't know what you call it. The arrow. The arrow look, we're not going to do it on a bench. We're going to do one bench one way and the other bench another way. So when you put the benches together, it makes that pattern. Shane came up with that idea and I thought it was really clever. So this is what this one's looking like. I haven't got the wood filler in it, the stain, nothing like that. Nothing at all. Hasn't been sanded or anything. But this is pretty much the style we're going with. Now that we know what we're doing, I'll show you guys how we did it. So we're making a frame. We're just taking two two by fours and we cut them to the length that we wanted the bench. And then we're taking a smaller piece of the two by four and we're just going to use it to frame out how big and wide we want the bench. He's using screws and not brad nails because girlfriend doesn't want to break it when I sit on it. So he's making the frame sturdy with the big old screws and then we're gonna also reinforce it with other things as well. Once he has the frame put together, he's gonna reinforce it with the other things like I was just telling you, the two of these pieces of wood. These pieces of wood go on top of this frame and that's what we put half the chevron pattern on. These are attached with screws from the bottom and brad nails from the top. So he attaches the frame from the bottom with long screws and from the top with brad nails. He's making sure there's an even amount of space on both sides because these two boards that we're laying right now underneath the frame, but it'll be on top once we flip it over, that's where the legs are going to go. And we have this little metal piece that we have to attach and we have to have room for that little metal piece in order to put the legs on. Here you'll see, you can find these at Lowe's. They're in the aisle where the legs are for like the tables, the end tables, the chairs, stuff like that. They're metal and you can screw them on like this. They screw right into the legs that you can get at Lowe's. We got these legs at Lowe's. And then what Shane's doing is he's taking a screw and he's making holes here. And that's how he knows whenever he puts his plate back down because he can't screw it on with the leg attached to it. So he detaches the leg, puts his plate down, finds his holes, and then screws in those holes. Once he has the plate screwed and attached to the surface of the bench there, then he can just take and twist the leg onto it and kind of screw the leg onto that plate. And as long as you don't have any warped wood or like any warped pieces or anything like that, any warping at all, then there should be level and it should not wobble. If it does wobble a little bit though, that doesn't mean the world's over because we can actually mess around with the tightness of the screws. So this table is gorgeous. I love it. But you guys remember me telling you just for you, it was just a few minutes ago. For me, it was a couple days ago because it's taking that long for this project. But do you remember me telling you about the wood glue, right? How I'm not very good at wood glue. It does not stain like the rest of the wood. No matter how much it says it's stainable, it does stain, but it's not going to get you the color that your wood does. Wood stains different color, right? You got poplar wood, you got cedar wood, you've got, uh, you got pine wood. All of those stain differently. No matter what they stain though, you'll never get that stain whenever you do wood filler. So this is the thing that I'm looking at right now. This table is gorgeous. But you can see the wood filler in between the gaps. Everybody else has been like, oh, Marina, it's fine. And I don't think it looks bad, but I just, I don't know. I'm going to try something. So this is, see that? Like, it looks like it was, it also looks like I meant to do that. I didn't, though. But I'm going to try something. So I'm going to see if I can do the wood filler any better on the benches and get the wood filler completely sanded off and like from the top but keep it in the grooves. I suck at wood filler but I, this project is my project baby and so if I can fix the top of this then I'm playing with the idea of sanding it all down and starting all over and that's going to take about five hours. Um, but if I can't and if the benches turn out the same 
as a table then I'm just going to roll with it because I mean there's not you can only do what you can do right I can only do what I literally know how to do and nothing more it's just a minor thing that's really irking me right now and I'm thinking about it day and night and I just cannot go on doing that without trying to fix it at least we're gonna try to not make the same mistakes that we made with this table on the benches and if it works out in our favor then we're gonna sand this whole table down and start from scratch It'll be worth it if I, it can stop controlling my brain 24-7. Because I woke up this morning thinking about it. I went to bed last night thinking about it. I've ate breakfast this morning thinking about it. But we'll see. Only time will tell. After the two benches were assembled and the legs were put on them and everything, we decided to go with half of the chevron look on each bench so that when you put the two benches together, it made the pattern that was on the table. So Shane just went about making it on the benches the same way he did on the table. He just had to do one side at a time and it didn't have to be so seamless because we were gonna put the edging around it anyway like we did the table. I didn't use one by three border though. I used smaller ones. I think they're either one by ones or one by twos. I don't want your persona I just want to be real with you tonight Can I have you alone now? I just want to reveal what's on my mind You tell me that you're used to no feelings But I'm gonna change it Yeah, you'll be awakened Cause when my love starts working on you It'll take your breath away like never show you the art of paradise you tell me that you used to no dreaming but i'm gonna change it yeah i'll take you straight to And Shane sucks at wood filling, but our kids are masters at wood. I wish you could see the difference between my wood filling lines and their wood filling lines. And I'm trying to get Jay to teach me the secret, and it's just not clicking. Is this, this? Okay, what's how I do it? Yeah, put a little pressure, like how Jason did. Okay. First, two, three, five. Two, three, five. We're chilling in the ice. Chilling in the ice. Chilling in the ice. Mom, see, you have to put a little pressure like this. Everyone, is everyone watching? Look. Yep. This is the situation right here. You guys see these lines, right? Well, I sanded them down on the table, but. Apparently I didn't send them enough. Like I said, I'm not very well educated on sanding. I'm learning as I go. So that's what those look like. Kind of little candy canes. My mess up over here is... It's, everybody's saying it's no big deal, but it's bothering me. It's this... It looks like I slapped... I told one of our friends on here, Darlene. She's, she's a friend that's on here, and she's on here all the time. Always leaving comments. Always in my DMs on Instagram. Like, always. I, that's how I recognize you guys. Like, I can tell you guys by your names or by your profile pictures. If I see a cartoon squirrel, I know exactly who it is. If I see a red-headed, pretty brandy lady, I know exactly who that is. If I see Jean Lange, I know exactly who that is. Janet, Sandy, Lisa, all of them. I know, like, by the way that they comment. <laughs> yes, Brenda Weathers. Can't forget. Shane remind me of Brenda Weathers. Can't, I cannot I forget you guys when you just keep commenting. And that's how I grow to like look for you guys in the comments and stuff. Dark Horse, all of them. You may not know your real name, but you can best Johnny. I know your username and I know your YouTube picture. I was telling Darlene, she said something about me not being able to mess something up. And I was like, girl, girl, <laughs> girl. <laughs> it looks like I've slathered mud in between each of these. So I'm not excited about sanding this down. But it's necessary i don't want to do anything half but i'm trying my best to learn as i go and just try to up my quality sometimes i can't help it because sometimes i really don't know what i'm doing and it's just a it's a learning process but 
the learning process includes messing up and then fixing your mess ups. So we broke, we broke the sander. <laughs> I broke the sander. I was being nice. <laughs> Shane broke the sander. We had to go to Home Depot, which I'll insert a picture here of me being super uncomfortable in Home Depot. I don't like Home Depot. I don't like Home Depot at all. We had to get a new one and I decided to go with an orbital, a random orbital corded sander because the one that I had wasn't high powered enough. I mean, we broke it <laughs> and it was a Craftsman and we love Craftsman, but I went with a Makita. Makita. The only way I can remember that is because my favorite Japanese place to eat is Akita. So I, I went with the Makita. Hakuna Makita. I went to the Makita from Home Depot. And it's really pretty, but it's supposed to be very heavy duty and it was a lot pricier than my other one. So hopefully the price means it's better quality because I need it to last longer than the last one did. We love Craftsman, don't we Shane? Like Craftsman's your favorite. We love yeah, Craftsman. Really like Craftsman. But the sander, I mean, it could just been, it had two amateurs playing with it all the time. I mean, it's I really what it was. This has a bag on the back and it's a random orbiter one. So we have to be careful and not so much as go with the grain you have to I've been doing a lot of research on the way home you have to go with the grain when it's your standard orbiter but when it's a random orbiter it's a little bit more forgiving pros to this is it is forgiving but it does have settings different settings and it is very high power it's it's heavier dutier heavier dutier it's dutier he heavier dutier this is it's the one that we inches, got by the way. this is the one this is the one that we got it's the five inch one and it does have five inch random orbit sander variable speed so it does have different speeds on it it is corded too which i wanted because i was tired of the battery dying on the old one the craftsman sander sucks up those batteries like crazy like that yeah so i'm gonna go outside and play with this while it's still daylight and i'll update you guys on if i can get this grout stuff gone if I can, then we're sitting down my whole table again and, and start from the beginning. If I can't, we're just going to go with it because I don't know what else to do at this point. I just hate wood filler so bad. If you guys have any tips, let me know. I don't care if you're a professional or not. If you have anything that you think could help me out, like any advice or tips when it comes to wood filler, please give me, share your wisdom. <laughs> well, looks like I'll be sitting down the table because look how much better that looks. I just sanded it down with that orbiting one. It's... <sighs> Man, that's the way you're supposed to do it. But I'm gonna teach you. I'm gonna reach you. Cause when my eyes changing up this whole project right now. <laughs> We're just changing up the whole thing. I'm not, so the bottom of it is a cream color. I really like it, but it wasn't what I envisioned. It is the color, the cream that's on there now is this color, right? It's very light. Um, it's very creamy. I'm not a fan of cream furniture. It is very pretty though. This is Honey Locust by Valspar, okay? So you see how light that is, right? We're going to go with this color, this taupey color. It is Glidden and it's Tri Taupe Wood. Tri Taupe Wood, let me. I need to go to Home Depot. I think I already told you about that. I got the premium interior paint and I got it in the satin. And this is what's going to be on the bottom half of the kitchen table set with the benches. And then I'm going to stain the benches tonight and then tomorrow i'm going to take my time sanding all this off the table so we can start from scratch but it's a good day to be alive got us still on the throne ain't nothing wrong with having to start over so we're, we're just gonna roll with it the crazy is what i was going for the cream was just light too light too light this is what the cream looks like right now it is really really pretty like i said i just don't like cream furniture and i've said that from the beginning see it's so similar to the white that's on that old bench. So we're going to 
build on what we already have here and just make it work. Sometimes I gotta do that with projects. Like this black wall here, I wanna know y'all's input on this black wall. Not right now, but once y'all see the finished product with this table and these benches in here, I wanna know what you guys think of the black wall. Does it stick out like a sore thumb with my other vibe I got going on in my house or what? I'm anxious to know. But like I said, don't type it yet. Wait until we see where the process takes us. <laughs> burn it up because I just got the bench top sanded and I got it stained let me show you how it turned out with me sanding the wood filler completely off down into the grain it is seamless but there is no dimension you can't tell where the herringbone pattern or the chevron whatever you want to call it pattern is you can tell that the grain is diagonal but that there's no like cut you know what I'm saying you can tell there's a cut on the table because of the wood filler right like see right here you can tell there's a cut because there's wood filler mesh right there you can tell there's a cut you can tell there's a seam because of the wood filler see that it helps you see the the diagonal pattern so i'm not happy with this this i'm not happy with this at all the seam looks messy because of the wood filler the it just looks like i've got mud in between shane can't figure it out and i don't know if it's just a me thing what do you guys think would you change this right here you can really see what i'm talking about like this is all wood filler i was not sanded all the way down all of that right here you can see this right here is it a perfectionist thing an ocd thing i don't i don't know it's bothering me enough that i'm going to probably spend the next five hours sanding this sucker down so it's bothering me <laughs> enough i'm going to try something though on the grooves much like I did on, see how I have the insides of those diagonal, you see those lines right there, the line. Whenever I put the shiplap up there, it's like went seamless, it shut, even though it's diagonal. So what I did is I went over it with a Sharpie and kind of made the, the grooves pop, the seams pop. I'm not doing it with the Sharpie on this table, like I said, this table is my baby project, I have worked hours and hours and hours and hours on this thing which both Shane and I have worked hours hours and hours on this thing so I've invested a lot of my time and my life into it so I'm going to use paint markers and see if I can get the same sort of effect but with a black paint marker can we just take a minute to appreciate the fact that fearfully created is actually fixing one of her mess ups because 2020 fearfully created would never <laughs> I would go with it and I'd be like nah it ain't bothering me I've changed the design of this, I should say. I have 
other times. The bottom isn't going to be cream anymore. It's going to be that color you guys saw me paint in the benches. And the good thing is, is if I had had my old sander now, that it would have taken days. It would have taken days. But now that I had that new high powered one, it'll probably only take me, I'm saying five hours. I'm hoping it's not going to take five hours. I'm hoping these six, six, five or six coats of poly, I'm going to be able to cut through it fairly easy. I sealed the heck out of this thing. My first project I ever sealed properly. And, and you gotta go back. And I gotta go back. <laughs> ain't nothing, ain't nothing, ain't nothing. Ain't nothing but thing. Still a good day to be alive. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Okay, let me just pray over this real quick. Lord, I know this is just a table, and in the big scheme of things, it don't really matter. But Lord, you've seen how much time I've put into this, and you care about what I care about. And I really care about this table right now. So in Jesus' name, I ask that this go smoothly, and I'm, I will plead the blood of Jesus over this table. Because this is where we eat our food, and this is where we prepare and eat what God has provided for us. So, Lord, this is just a customization thing. This is materialistic, and in the big grand scheme of things, it don't matter, but it matters to me right now, so I know it matters to you. Please let this go well. And please don't let my time spent on this table be in vain. In Jesus' name, amen. Best believe it's going to turn out immaculate. Now, watch. Watch. I'm, I will put it on the line right now. That's how much faith I have in Jesus. It's going to turn out immaculate. Lord Jesus, I pray that tempers fly under the radar. <laughs>
explained and it is getting dangerous i don't wanna fight the feeling inside because your words are so contagious i don't wanna be distracted no i'm having a reaction oh i give it to you give it to your state of mind you don't wanna be distracted no you're having a reaction oh i can feel that you i can feel you burn it up cause tonight we lose it all we let go it's something in the way you move that makes me do things i've never done yet yeah, tonight we lose it all i'm broken and even if the sky would fall in flames are getting closer whenever i'm standing i can't let i can't like let this hit the table or it leaves these little constellation looking artworks on the table and then it looks splotchy when I stand over it. So I'm just gonna lightly stand over it with this. Look at that, supernova. Constellations are gone. I'm trying as best as I can to go with the grain and I'm not making it so dark. I could have done several coats on this and it would have darkened it up, but I knew I was going to go in with the paint pens and do grout lines, sort of like the, the seams, you know, between the planks. So I wanted it to be light enough so that the paint pen would show up. Was never what I meant to do for us, even though you're okay, I wish that I Give you all of me for you to save When it gets dark I'll take the blame For what we are I'm not sure that we Can keep getting rid of emotion Bite our time and proceed Calculate and the equation He and Shane just noticed something. My butt prints on the wall. <laughs> wow. That was hard. <laughs> yeah, that's hard, alright. Do y'all see how seamless it is now? Do y'all see how seamless it is now? Like it is seamless now still drying i'm gonna have to seal it here in a little bit there's no more cruddy fillers
really good at making stains. What? I said you're really good at making stains. No? Yo, this bench is looking so good. It's matching that table. Pineapple pen. Going to steal it all over again with probably five or six coats of poly because we saw how good that that did. So we'll probably go with six coats again. Look at my kiddo's artwork. Uh, <laughs> I, said, I love mama. <laughs> um, I just got done. You can't, can't see me because I got the window to my back. But I just got done painting the bottom of the table and refresh painting for like the 50th billion coat. The bottom of the benches. I told y'all I had trust in Jesus. Now, when you put Jesus' name on something, I'm telling you, you can't go wrong. You cannot go wrong. When you pray over something in Jesus' name, you can't go wrong. I'm going to show you the difference in this table. And I don't know what I'm doing. I, I mean, I didn't know what I was doing the first time. I don't know what I was doing the second time. I did learn a lot during this project, though. This project has taken over a week to do. Granted, our schedules, mine schedules are, mine and Shane's schedules are like wacky when it comes to working with each other. So, a lot of this was spent one of us doing something, you know, and then the other one having time to do something, and then the other one coming in and having time to do something. In Jesus' name, amen. Best believe it's going to turn out immaculate. Now, watch, watch. I'm, I will put it on the line right now. That's how much faith I have in Jesus. It's going to turn out immaculate. Spinning time far away Was never what I meant to do for us Even though you're okay I wish that I could give you all of me For you to see y'all for hanging out with me i hope you'll have a blessed morning even not whatever it is wherever you're at know that i love you but jesus loves you so much more i will see y'all later